I think everybody is very excited, uh, without doubt. Some are worried, but overall, I think there's great excitement between the players, the community, and the cricket world uh, to look at, look forward to this new product. We think that uh, you know, with a billion people in India alone uh, being fans of cricket and 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 loving the uh, cricket being more than more than a religion across the country, uh, I see no reason why it shouldn't be bigger than the Premiership uh, in the in the very near future. If you actually calculate what a Mahendra Singh Dhoni gets uh, or, or Andrew Simon gets for, a, for playing per week. Uh, Simon you know, gets close to over a, a hundred thousand pounds a week to play for the IPL. I think there are very few English uh, Premier League players in the world that get a hundred thousand pounds a week to play for the English Premier League. So uh, in contrast, I think a lot of our players are probably going to be the highest paid players in the world in any sport for the time that they're spending with the, uh, with the DLF Indian Premier League. I think it's important that uh, we come to some sort of an understanding with the English where we can either move our calendar up a few weeks and they can move their calendar down a few weeks because it only benefits both of us. Uh, all the players playing for the DLF Indian Premier League are also wanting to be playing in the county cricket and are already playing, used to playing in county cricket. And so we have, we have no reason why that shouldn't continue. Uh, and we think that if we are just able to make our calendars, uh, more, synchronize our calendars a little bit, I think it will be beneficial to both parties. As for compensation to the boards are concerned, I don't think that's an issue uh, that we are even discussing. I think nobody's asked us for compensation as such. Because at the end of the day, most boards earn their money on a, on a bilateral tour basis. And we're not going to be cutting down on bilateral tours. I think bilateral tours is something that we're going to continue with. If we are playing with somebody on a certain level, we will do so. Uh, but if countries who do not, who are detrimental to the IPL, uh, of course, we will cut back in the number of games we play with them. A lot of the agents of all the players in England have contacted us and we have primarily told them that in the first season, we will not be able to accommodate any of the English players because we haven't been able to sort out the window with the ECB and we have an informal understanding with all the boards that we would not like to impinge upon on their calendar. And the objective of ours is to just to enhance the calendar and everybody else all the cricket boards and not to in any way be detrimental to them and that's why we haven't taken any of the English players in the in the first year. Flintoff and Ann Peterson are very very appealing to the uh, to our owners and they they are they are the type of people that our owners are looking for. If you look at it if you did the same product anywhere else in the world the likelihood of getting the kind of revenue that we have generated is, is highly unlikely uh, because uh, globally if you look at the cricket pie um, India accounts for close to about 80% of the cricket pie. In India, the only two things that I watch, one is Bollywood and the other is cricket. Now you've got the best of Bollywood and the best of cricket all in one package. India has, for the last 100 years, been subservient to the rest of the world. So all of a sudden, if it's our time to be in glory, I see no reason to be. And I can understand we're pushing the envelope, which we are not doing so. We are asking for something unfair. We're not asking for that. We're saying it should be an even playing field. People are not used to even playing fields. People are used to dictating terms to us. And that is what we don't want it to happen.